As the world's largest asset management company, BlackRock wields significant influence over the global economy, yet many people have never heard of this powerful conglomerate. With $9 trillion in assets under management, BlackRock is involved in virtually every sector of the financial industry, from managing pension funds to advising governments on economic policy. However, despite its pervasive presence, some conspiracy theorists believe that BlackRock and other large investment firms are part of a secret cabal that controls global finance and politics. While these claims are unfounded and lack any credible evidence, they reflect the growing unease and suspicion that many people feel about the role of powerful institutions in shaping our world. Whether you believe in the conspiracy theories or not, BlackRock's influence cannot be denied, and its actions are sure to have a significant impact on the global economy for years to come. And now we will be diving into the BlackRock company a bit to look at some of the company's history trying to form a general perspective about this massive conglomerate. A secret cabal is a group of individuals who operate covertly to achieve their objectives, often at the expense of the public. Conspiracy theories about secret cabal have existed for centuries, with some of the most famous examples being the Illuminati, the Freemasons and the Bilderberg Group. The basic premise behind these conspiracy theories is that a small group of powerful individuals control the world behind the scenes, using their wealth and influence to shape political policy, economic systems, and social norms to serve their own interests. These individuals are said to operate outside the normal channels of government and democracy, using their wealth and influence to control the levers of power from the shadows. According to these conspiracy theories, secret cabal use their connections with government officials and politicians to shape policy in their favor. They are said to fund political campaigns, influence legislation, and use their connections to ensure that their interests are protected, often at the expense of the general public. While there is no credible evidence to support these claims, conspiracy theories about secret cabal have persisted for centuries, reflecting the deep-seated fears and anxieties that many people have about the power of elites in shaping our world. While it is important to remain vigilant and hold powerful institutions accountable for their actions, it is equally important to rely on factual information and credible sources when evaluating any claims or allegations, rather than giving in to baseless speculation and fear-mongering. Now, we will dive into BlackRock and you decide if they could fit the bill. BlackRock Incorporated is a global investment management company that provides a range of financial products and services to institutional and individual clients. The company was founded in 1988 and is headquartered in New York City. BlackRock manages assets on behalf of clients in more than 100 countries and has offices in major financial centers around the world. The company's offerings include mutual funds, exchange-traded funds, separate accounts, and alternative investments. BlackRock also provides risk management and advisory services, as well as technology solutions for investment professionals. BlackRock is one of the largest investment management firms in the world, with over $9 trillion in assets under management as of the end of 2021. The company is known for its expertise in passive investing, particularly through its iShares line of ETFs, but also offers actively managed funds and other investment strategies. BlackRock is led by its CEO and chairman, Lawrence D. Fink. Fink co-founded the company in 1988 and has been its CEO since then. He has been widely credited with building BlackRock into one of the world's largest and most influential investment management firms. In addition to Fink, BlackRock has a team of executives who oversee various aspects of the company's operations, including its investments, client relationships, and technology. The company's leadership structure includes a president, vice chairman, and a board of directors that provides oversight and guidance for the company. Lawrence Stephink is an American businessman who is the founder, CEO, and chairman of BlackRock, one of the largest investment management firms in the world. Born on November 2, 1952, in Van Nuys, California, he grew up in a middle-class Jewish family. A towering figure in the financial industry, known for his shrewd business acumen and expertise in managing complex financial products. He has been recognized for his contributions to the industry with numerous awards and accolades, including being named one of Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People in the World in 2020. However, Fink has also been the subject of criticism and controversy. In recent years, BlackRock has faced scrutiny over its investments in fossil fuels and its role in perpetuating the climate crisis. Fink has been criticized for his perceived lack of action on climate change, 
with some activists accusing him of greenwashing and failing to take meaningful steps to address the issue. In Fink's case, critics argue that while he has publicly acknowledged the need to address climate change, BlackRock's investment strategy and business practices are not aligned with this goal. For example, BlackRock has been a major investor in fossil fuel companies, despite the fact that the burning of fossil fuels is a major contributor to greenhouse gas emissions and the climate crisis. Critics argue that BlackRock's continued investment in these companies contradicts Fink's public statements about the need to address climate change and transition to a more sustainable economy. Additionally, some critics argue that BlackRock's focus on passive index funds, which track broad market indices, means that the company is not able to fully exercise its voting rights as a shareholder to push for meaningful change in the companies it invests in. This has led to accusations that BlackRock is not doing enough to hold companies accountable for their environmental impact and is not using its influence to advocate for stronger climate policies. Overall, critics accuse Fink and BlackRock of paying lip service to environmental concerns while continuing to prioritize short-term financial gains over long-term sustainability. Despite being a major shareholder in many companies, BlackRock has been accused of not doing enough to use its influence to push for meaningful change. The company has been criticized for failing to support shareholder resolutions calling for more transparent reporting on environmental impact and sustainability. The company's lack of diversity has also been criticized. BlackRock's homogenous leadership team and investment approach limits its ability to fully understand and address the complex social and environmental issues facing the world today. Despite these criticisms, Fink remains a powerful and influential figure in the financial industry, with his decisions and actions shaping the direction of global finance and economics. There are various reasons why some conspiracy theorists might believe that BlackRock is secretly controlling the world. Considering BlackRock is the world's largest asset manager, with trillions of dollars in assets under management. This gives the firm a significant amount of influence over global financial markets and the companies in which it invests. Additionally, BlackRock has been involved in a number of high-profile initiatives, such as its role in implementing the US Federal Reserve's COVID-19 response program, which has led some to speculate that the firm wields significant political power as well. BlackRock's close relationship with governments and central banks around the world has led some conspiracy theorists to believe that the firm is part of a larger, shadowy network of elites that control global finance and politics. It's important to note, however, that there is no credible evidence to support these claims, and they are widely regarded as unfounded and baseless. While BlackRock is a powerful and influential player in the financial industry, it operates within the confines of the law and is subject to rigorous regulatory oversight. BlackRock became involved with the US Federal Reserve's COVID-19 response program in March 2020, when the Fed announced that it would be purchasing billions of dollars in corporate bonds and exchange-traded funds in an effort to stabilize financial markets amid the economic fallout of the pandemic. As the world's largest asset manager, BlackRock was tapped by the Fed to help execute the bond buying program, known as the Secondary Market Corporate Credit Facility. BlackRock was selected in part because of its expertise in managing fixed income assets and its extensive trading platform, which allowed the Fed to quickly and efficiently purchase a wide range of corporate bonds and ETFs. Under the terms of the agreement, BlackRock was responsible for managing the SUCSF's portfolio and executing its trades on behalf of the Fed. The firm was also required to adhere to strict conflict of interest policies to ensure that it did not engage in any trading activities that could be seen as self-serving or that could create the appearance of impropriety. Overall, BlackRock's involvement in the Fed's COVID-19 response program was seen as a key factor in helping to stabilize financial markets during a period of extreme volatility and uncertainty. Even though there is a massive conflict of interest in this, no one has ever been able to prove BlackRock did anything wrong. BlackRock, as a major player in the financial industry, was heavily involved in the economic collapse of 2008. As a firm that manages investment portfolios for clients, BlackRock was exposed to the housing market through its holdings in mortgage-backed securities. During the housing boom of the early 2000s, BlackRock and other financial institutions invested heavily in mortgage-backed securities. These securities were bundles of mortgage that were sold to investors, with the expectation that the underlying mortgage would continue to perform well. However, as the housing market collapsed in 2008, these securities became nearly worthless, causing significant losses for investors. 
BlackRock was not immune to these losses, but the firm was able to weather the storm better than many of its peers. The company had established risk management strategies that helped it avoid some of the riskier investments that led to the collapse. However, critics have pointed out that BlackRock's risk management strategies were not foolproof, and that the company still suffered significant losses during the economic downturn. Some have even argued that BlackRock's large holdings in mortgage-backed securities contributed to the severity of the crisis. Despite these criticisms, BlackRock emerged from the crisis relatively unscathed compared to many other financial institutions. The company was able to take advantage of the turmoil in the market to acquire distressed assets at bargain prices, and it emerged from the crisis with a stronger position in the financial industry. In terms of profits, it is difficult to estimate exactly how much money BlackRock made from the economic collapse of 2008. While the company did suffer losses on its investments, it also benefited from the opportunities created by the crisis. The company's strong performance during and after the crisis likely helped attract new clients and grow its business, which would have led to increased revenues in the years following the crisis. Following the economic collapse of 2008, the US government sought assistance from financial institutions like BlackRock to help analyze the extent of the crisis and develop solutions to address it. BlackRock played a significant role in this effort by providing expertise and analysis on the complex financial instruments and securities that were at the heart of the crisis. The company was hired by the Federal Reserve Bank of New York to manage some of the assets acquired through the government's bailout programs, and it also worked closely with government agencies to develop new regulations aimed at preventing similar crises from occurring in the future. Specifically, BlackRock was involved in analyzing the toxic assets that had contributed to the crisis, as well as developing stress tests to evaluate the stability of financial institutions. The company also provided advice on how to structure government programs aimed at stabilizing the financial system, such as the Troubled Asset Relief Program. Overall, BlackRock's involvement in government efforts to address the economic collapse of 2008 was seen as an example of the increasing influence of financial institutions in government policymaking. While some criticized the company's involvement as a conflict of interest, others argued that it was necessary to leverage the expertise of the financial industry to find solutions to the complex problems facing the economy. Critics of BlackRock's involvement in government efforts to address the economic collapse of 2008 argued that the company's close ties to the financial industry created a conflict of interest that could undermine its ability to act in the public interest. One of the main criticisms was that BlackRock had a vested interest in protecting the value of the assets it managed, which included many of the same toxic assets that had contributed to the crisis. BlackRock's advice and analysis could be influenced by its desire to protect the value of these assets. For example, in 2009, BlackRock was hired by the Federal Reserve Bank of New York to manage a portfolio of mortgage-backed securities acquired through the government's bailout programs. Critics argued that BlackRock's involvement in managing these assets gave the company a direct financial stake in the success of the government's bailout programs, which could influence its advice and analysis. Because BlackRock had a financial stake in the success of the government's bailout programs, it may have been less inclined to provide objective advice or analysis that could have undermined the effectiveness of those programs. This could have led to a situation where BlackRock was prioritizing its own financial interests over the broader public interest. In theory, BlackRock may have been more inclined to recommend policies or programs that were beneficial to the financial industry, even if they were not in the best interests of the broader economy or the American public. BlackRock's involvement in government efforts to address the economic collapse of 2008 created a perception of impropriety, even if no actual wrongdoing had occurred. This perception could erode public trust in government institutions and further undermine the public interest. So essentially the critics were arguing that BlackRock's conflict of interest undermined its ability to act in the public interest by creating a situation where the company's financial interests and its role as an advisor to the government were in conflict. While BlackRock did earn fees for its work advising the government during the 2008 economic collapse, it is difficult to determine exactly how much profit the company made from its involvement. The fees that BlackRock earned from the government were relatively small compared to the company's overall revenue, and it is likely that BlackRock's involvement in the government's response to the economic collapse had a minimal impact on the company's financial performance. However, it is worth noting that BlackRock's involvement in the government's response to the economic collapse did increase the company's visibility and credibility as a financial advisor, which could have helped to attract new clients and expand its business in the future. BlackRock has also faced a string of accusations of anti-competitive behavior. 
In 2019, BlackRock was sued by a group of asset management firms who accused the company of engaging in anti-competitive behavior. The plaintiffs alleged that BlackRock violated antitrust laws by using its market dominance to force asset managers to pay higher fees for data and analytics services. In 2018, a German watchdog group launched an investigation into BlackRock's business practices, particularly with regards to the firm's use of most favored nation clauses in contracts with asset managers. In 2015, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission fined BlackRock $12 million for violating disclosure rules related to potential conflicts of interest between its portfolio managers and outside fund distributors. The SEC found that BlackRock had not properly disclosed that it allowed some portfolio managers to invest in funds that were distributed by firms with which BlackRock had business relationships. This created potential conflicts of interest that were not properly disclosed to investors. BlackRock neither admitted nor denied the charges, but agreed to the settlement and to improve its disclosures in the future. In 2014, BlackRock settled a lawsuit with investors who accused the firm of conspiring with other large asset managers to artificially inflate securities lending fees. The investors claimed that BlackRock and other firms colluded to fix prices and divide up the market, resulting in higher fees and less competition. The lawsuit alleged that BlackRock and other firms violated antitrust laws and breached their fiduciary duties to investors. The settlement amount was $340 million, which was distributed to the plaintiffs in the lawsuit. BlackRock did not admit to any wrongdoing as part of the settlement, but the firm did agree to make changes to its securities lending practices, including improving fee disclosures and increasing transparency for clients. The case was seen as significant because it shed light on the practices of large asset managers and raised questions about whether investors were being overcharged for securities lending services. It also highlighted the potential risks of collusion among firms in the financial industry. In 2012, BlackRock was sued by an investor who claimed the firm violated antitrust laws by engaging in a conspiracy to monopolize the market for exchange-traded funds. However, the case was dismissed by a federal judge in 2013. These allegations do leave a broad opening for interpretation of the company's priorities and trustworthiness, especially when the federal government is laying so much responsibility into their laps during times of need. There are many critics who attack BlackRock's investments in private prison companies which have been a subject of controversy and criticism for several years. Private prisons are facilities that are owned and operated by for-profit companies, and they have been criticized for their conditions, treatment of inmates, and a general lack of transparency. In recent years, several advocacy groups and investors have called on BlackRock to divest from private prison companies, arguing that the investments are incompatible with the asset manager's commitment to responsible investing and environmental, social, and governance considerations. These groups have argued that private prisons contribute to systemic injustice within the criminal justice system, including over-incarceration, mistreatment of inmates, and profit motives that may conflict with public safety and rehabilitation. In response, BlackRock has stated that it engages with private prison companies to encourage better practices and to address human rights concerns. The company has said that it encourages these companies to prioritize the safety and well-being of inmates, to ensure that their operations are transparent, and to maintain high standards of governance. BlackRock has also stated that it is working with other investors and stakeholders to address these issues and to promote responsible investing practices. Despite BlackRock's efforts, the controversy over its investments in private prison companies continues. In addition to advocacy groups, several investors and shareholders have filed resolutions and taken other actions to encourage the company to divest from these institutions. While BlackRock has stated that it is committed to addressing human rights concerns in its investments, the debate over its role in private prisons highlights the complex issues involved in responsible investing and the tension between financial considerations and social responsibility. The exact amount that BlackRock has profited from its investments in private prison companies is not publicly known, as the company does not disclose this information. However, according to a report by the activist group Inlands, BlackRock held significant investments in two of the largest private prison companies in the United States, CoreCivic, formerly known as Corrections Corporation of America and GEO Group, as of 2018. The report estimated that BlackRock held over $2 billion worth of shares in these companies, CoreCivic has experienced significant growth in its operations over the past decade, as the private prison industry has expanded in the United States. According to the company's annual reports, 
Its revenue increased from $1.7 billion in 2010 to $1.9 billion in 2020, representing a growth of approximately 12% over the decade. Obviously BlackRock has an obligation to its investors to deliver profits, but at what cost? BlackRock is a powerful financial conglomerate that has become the subject of various conspiracy theories and accusations of being part of a secret cabal that controls the world's financial systems. Many of these theories lack evidence and are widely dismissed, but they continue to persist in certain corners of the internet. However, regardless of these conspiracy theories, BlackRock's impact on the global economy is undeniable. The company has been praised for its innovative investment strategies and its role in helping to stabilize the global financial system during times of crisis. At the same time, it has faced criticism for its allegedly prioritizing profits over long-term sustainability and its role in exacerbating economic inequality. BlackRock's involvement in government policymaking has also drawn scrutiny, with critics alleging conflicts of interest and questioning the company's ability to act in the public interest. Whether or not these allegations are true, the fact remains that BlackRock's enormous influence over global financial markets and governments is a cause for concern. Despite the controversy surrounding BlackRock, it remains one of the most powerful financial institutions in the world and its impact on the global economy is likely to continue for years to come. And it is up to individuals, governments and regulatory bodies to ensure that its actions are in line with the best interests of society as a whole. Thank you for watching and if you enjoy this style of content please like the video and subscribe.